sweat of blessings will continue to be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will show himself mighty on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. This was a kind of dance that David danced. And from it, you will begin to see the message of God follow him. I'm actually, pre I'm actually preparing a message which is called the sure message of David, which talks about all the ramifications of blessings that comes with mercy. For many of us, when you ask for the mercy of God, you are asking for forgiveness. But I can tell you that the cry for mercy is a war cry. It's a battle cry. It also comes along with so many things. So this is one of the things that David did that made him qualify for the mercies of God. As I pray for you, for everyone that is joined with us here, the mercies of God will not depart from you in 2023. Everywhere you turn to, you will see the mercies of God in the name of Jesus Christ. You express the mercy of God at your workplace in the name of Jesus. Among your family, you express the mercy of God. Over your children, you express the mercy of God. In whatever you do, when you stand before your employer, you express the mercy of God. Mercy will bring favor to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please, can you just take a minute, just welcome somebody to church and say, Happy New Year indeed. That this, please prophesy to them that this year shall indeed be happy for you. Tell them that they will know the true meaning of happiness. That this year shall signpost happiness round about for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What we want to do, you have actually experienced, that's a shower of blessing, don't worry. There's a shower of mercy. It's the AC, they had to increase it to the highest, and then they didn't have to recharge and to say, so... It is well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. What we're going to be doing today is a prophetic one. And I want every one of us to take this very, very seriously. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will make this a wonderful time in the presence of God for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have started this year in the presence of God. You will not leave his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. I said you will not leave the, his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. There is a prayer that they used to pray in our church way back that whatever a child of God will see, that will make them leave the presence of God to go and begin to worship some other idols. You will not know it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. There are some people, the vicissitudes of life, the difficulties of life, when it shows up, they begin to look for one Baba somewhere who will help them because they think that is sharper. But I pray for you that you will not know that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we shall be anointing each and every one of us. This anointing will give you extra power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you have seen so far, whatever ability God has given you so far, this anointing will bring it to the fore in the name of Jesus Christ. There is something they used to do in old time warfare. They have, when they still used to fight wars with arrows, with bow and arrow. There is a way that they shoot arrow, and then there are people that are skilled in shooting arrows. It will catch up with somebody, and then the person will die. For some, for some people, they don't die. But then there is this other way that things go. There are some people, they take the point of their arrows before they will shoot it. Before they will shoot it. They will poison the arrow. They will poison the top of the arrow so that whatever it touches gets there. This anointing will make your arrow poisonous to the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we take this song? Can somebody help me? By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Uh, Pastor Bobby, please stand up, pick up the microphone, and let us sing this song. Let us rise to our feet. Let us rise to our feet as we start this.
By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet said, this is the day of the latter rain. God is moving in his power again. The song actually says, as the prophet says, and I come to you as a prophet today to impart, to anoint. I pray that your head will not refuse the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. And every power that comes with the anointing, you'll be a particle of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we'll be anointing you, I want you to know what it is for. What is the essence of it? What you should be expecting? And I pray, according to the word of God, your expectations shall not be cut off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you. Amen. Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we want to go into your word briefly. And thereafter, we will do that which you have commanded us expressly to do. Father, we pray. This word will get to the person who needs it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This word will impact in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This word will go ahead to achieve the purpose for which it is being released in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, Father, we pray, let the shame be to the devil in the name of Jesus. Let the blessings be to your people in the name of Jesus. And let the glory be to you only in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please have your seats. You want to ask because today you want to ask what is the anointing? And many of us might have been asking, you might have been hearing about anointing and if I ask you, you're asking what is anointing? And if you check, Google is always your friend. You can check what it means. Google says three things. It says to ceremonially confer divine or holy office upon a priest or a monarch by smearing or rubbing with oil. I'll repeat it again. Please so listen so that you know what you are taking. By to ceremonially confer divine or holy office upon a priest or a monarch by smearing or rubbing with oil. The second definition goes like this. It to make someone holy in a religious ceremony, 
by putting holy water or oil on them to make someone king or queen. We're going to be making you king and kings and queens today. It will work in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three says, consecrated or made sacred, dedicated to God, often in a ceremony that includes dabbing or sprinkling with oil. Consecrated or made sacred, dedicated to God, often in a ceremony that includes dabbing or sprinkling with oil. We're going to be consecrating you today. And you'll be in this consecrated unto God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What consecration does is that when anything evil is coming, there is something, there is a force that goes into being that takes you away from it. They say, this one is a special one among them. Remove him from that evil. Every, every evil coming your way, every evil plan for you in year 2023, as you receive this anointing today, it will not reach you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the meaning of anointing. Now, the, the next thing is, what is the purpose of anointing? Anointing serves three distinct purposes. I just want us to, I want to provide a background for what we are doing so that as you are doing it, you are spiritually alert. You understand what it's going to do. What is the purpose of anointing? It serves three distinct purposes. Number one, say it is a means of health and comfort. Number two, it is a token of honor. Number three, it is a symbol of consecration. Let me go over it again in case you are writing. One, it is a means of health and comfort. Two, it is a token of honor. And three, it is a symbol of consecration. How can a person receive the anointing? How is it done? We have talked about anointing. We have talked also about what is the purpose of it. So how do you receive it? Only a priest or bishop may administer the right. Only a priest or bishop may administer the right. The initial elements of the right consist of this. Please listen very well. Consists of various prayers and readings from the gospel. Then the priest will lay his hands on the head of the recipient, invoking the Holy Spirit. So the anointing oil is not an end in itself. It is nothing. It is just a means. It's a carrier of the Holy Spirit. The invocation of the Holy Spirit is the real anointing. It is just that like it is done with anointing oil. Now, brethren, I want to assure you there is only that far a human being can go on his own. When you were born, God put several gifts in you, put several talents in you, put several empowerment. There are many things that you have been empowered with. But there is no human being that has everything. There is still some way in which you are lacking in one way or the other. Every human being, there is a way the human being behaves. For some people, they are very chatty. For some people, they are quiet. It is the formation of the human being. It is the Adamic nature that we have in us. So there is a way in which you have every type of, what do they call that thing, phlegmatic, um, what, what, what do they call that thing? Yes. Every one of those types of behavior or characterizations of the human being has its pluses and minuses. But there is that thing that can be conferred on you to make you complete. There is that power that you need in order for you to exceed expectation, to exceed what your normal self can be able to do. In order to go far, you need a push. If you put a car, the normal state in which a car is, is neutral. It's either neutral or parking. It can actually be parking. But you can engage the gear. 
to put it in neutral. That is normal. But you need a push. You need to engage the gear into one or two or three or four or five, as the case may be, in order for you to be able to move. If you stay in neutral, anything can happen. You can actually go forward. Somebody can just come and push. It can go forward. But it can only go forward in a certain speed. Don't forget also that if your gear is in neutral, somebody can come and push you back too. And human beings are wicked. God testified concerning human beings, said that the heart of human beings is desperately wicked. So the human beings that you are meeting every day, those who come, many people come with their Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and you will not know. They come with their own power. In this same New York, in the same UN, I have gone to somebody's house before. And the person has different uh, head of um, whatever, high doors. And she was showing this, ah, this thing, ah, I talk to it every day before I go out. In the United Nations. I'm not talking about United Nations in Bujumbura. In New York City. He said, ah, this thing, ah, if I talk to the thing, I have to consult the thing before going out every day. Those are the people that you are going with. So you cannot afford your new, your gear to be neutral because they are coming with forces to fight you. Can you imagine, and I've told us this before, David was going to fight Goliath. Goliath was a powerful man. Very powerful. The, the Bible said that he was coming every day and talking to, how many days? Is it 40 days or 40 days. It will come in the morning, it will come in the evening. 80 times. He said, who among you is powerful? Come and meet me. Let me fight them. And you know, the man was so huge. And the things that he was carrying, the power, the bronze helmet, everything that he was carrying, was weighing any so much tons, shekels of silver, or what have you. If you see David, if you see Goliath, you would think it is his stature and his elements around him that he's going to use to fight. But go and check the Bible. When he saw David coming, the Bible said that he cursed David with his gods. Can you imagine a old Goliath? Seeing small boy David coming, still went to engage his own gods against David. So the fight really is not the physical one. It is the spiritual one. If, the, if Goliath can be engaging Another God, apart from the power that he has, you should know that you need extra power. You will get that extra power today in the name of Jesus. The enablement to go through 2023 unscathed, you will get it today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So who is the anointing for? You have heard before we said it is for a priest, a king, or a prophet. I will repeat it again. The anointing, when they give the anointing, when they confer the anointing, it is, for, it is to make somebody a priest or a king or a prophet. Why? You need the spiritual power to operate in those offices. And what does the Bible call us? What did it say? He has made you a prince and a king, a royal priesthood. In order for you to operate in those offices, you need the anointing. You will get that anointing today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. First Kings chapter 19, verses 15 to 16. First Kings chapter 19, verses 15 to 16. My message is always very simple. It is the preparation, the background of it that can be complex. So that you can understand what it's about. First Kings chapter 19... Verses 15 to 16, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, now listen very well. The Lord was speaking to his prophet. And he was saying, don't worry, go on that journey. Just in the same way in which we can say today that go on the journey of year 2023. And when you are coming, anoint Azael to be king over Israel. Azahel, to be king over Israel. Yes, 16. And Jehu, 
the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. How many anointings now? Two. Three. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Three different anointings. Two for kings. Are we together? The third one is for who? It's for the priests. Can we go to the next verse? Let us see what it will be for. 17. Listen very carefully. What does that anointing, what would that anointing do? Three different anointings. One for a king, another one for a king, then the third one for a prophet. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Azael shall Jehu slay. So Azael is the first king. Azael is the king that is fighting for the cause of the Lord. So the Bible is saying here that when they come against Azael, the anointing will enable Azael to kill any of the enemies. But in case, some of them might escape. When, uh, when they escape Azael, the Bible is saying that any one of them that escape the, word, the sword of Azael shall Jehu slay. That is still a king. The third one is this. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Elisha is a prophet. What is the business of Elisha with, with sword? That is to tell you, you need anointing, both as a king and as a priest, to finish everything that amounts to. And we are not, when we are talking about enemy or opposition, it's not just physical enemies. There are forces that can come against you. You need powerful spiritual forces to counter them. And I pray for you that as you go into this new year, Anyone that is, in the, that is operating in the forces, in the office of an enemy that comes to you, it shall come to pass. When they escape the first sword, the second sword will catch up with them in the name of Jesus Christ. When they escape the second sword, the third sword of your priesthood will catch up with them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the redeemed Christian church of God. Ah, sister, don't miss I was wondering whether you are the one. God bless you. Good to see you. Anointing from Canada. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the Redeemed Christian Church of God, there are three levels of ordination. It, is, it has been made very, very simple. So you don't see in this church, you don't see somebody that is called most reverend, uh, archbishop, or most uh, very venerable, this and that and that. It's just three. One, deacon. The second, assistant pastor. And the third is what? Pastor. Eh? Oh, that of bishop is very, is, is peculiar to um, desire of nations. Three levels of ordination. Deacon, assistant pastor, pastor. After you, for you to become a deacon, it's not, a, it's not, my mind must have been worker, HOD or something, they spent five years as a worker. Then, from there, you go to the level of being assistant pastor. After how many years? Five years. Then, after that, when you are operating in the office of the assistant pastor, you get to the point whereby they say, ah, don't have four or five years, you become a pastor. Now, let me also mention to us, when they want to ordain a deacon, ordination of a deacon is done by the laying on of hands. Are we together? I hope you are understanding me. I'm telling you what is to come. Ordination of how many deacons do we have here? Or deaconesses. Deacon, deaconesses, how did they do it? Laying on of hands. By the time you have done five years as a deacon or deaconess, and you are stepping up, you are stepping up into priesthood. Ordination of an assistant pastor is by laying on of hands and anointing with oil. There's a distinction between the two. There is that much that you can get when they lay hands upon you. Then there is that far that you need to get when you become an assistant pastor. So anointing is added onto it. And on the, after that also, anointing of pastors is also done by anointing 
with oil. So there is a difference between the two because you are changing gears. So as we are anointing you today, it is for you to know that you need to change gears from year 2022 to 2023 because you are going to be conquering more in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are going to be slain for the Lord God Almighty more in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are going to be God's battle axe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me also mention, for whatever it's worth, it's good to, bra it's good to brag a little. You know what? I was anointed, I was um, ordained in Lagos as deacon. When I came to New York, that time I'd done five years, and so I was nominated to be assistant pastor. And assistant pastorship is by laying on of hands and anointing with oil. There are too many people to be anointed these days. Usually it was Daddy Gio that anoints people. But now, I have delegated it down. But me that you are seeing here. <laughs> me that you are seeing here. If it was in Lagos that I was ordained as an assistant pastor, it would be some uh, AGO or whoever who would anoint me. But then it was in Dallas. It was Daddy Gio that anointed me. And I recall this, and I say this before every one of us. To the glory of the Almighty God, the man spent time on me. When he was anointing me, I still feel his hand. He pressed the oil. It can mean either two things. It might mean, ah, you, boy, you don't want to collect this thing. I will force it down on you. It might also mean that I need you to do more than the others. Yes. The man pressed hand on me again and again and again. People were wondering that, what is your... <laughs> what is the problem with you? They were looking at you from the side of problem that, that this man must be... Maybe this man doesn't want to collect the thing. But I looked at it from the point of I'm collecting extra. That extra will work for you today in the name of Jesus. So what does the anointing do? It changes everything in someone's life and ministry. By the way, just looking back, I, I mean, I've not, really, I've not really sat down to tabulate it, but just looking back, where I was then, when I, was, when I became an assistant pastor, up to the point in which I was ordained as a full pastor, up till now, every year I'm just going forward. There is always something new that is added to me. Since that time, I have never known a better last year. Either financially, materially, spiritually, or emotionally. In any way, I've never known a better last year. In that same manner today, as you get anointed today, you will not know a better last year in the name of Jesus Christ. What does the anointing do? It will affect your ministry and your life. And then what will activate the anointing? And this is where I need you to listen very carefully. What will activate the anointing? Because when I lay hands on you and I put on the anointing, it is something else for you to, it's for, something for me to put it on you. It is something for you to receive it. And it is something else for you to begin to walk in it. What will activate the anointing? I will just give just one panacea. Your faith. Your faith. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will grant you faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you don't place any value on the anointing that you are going to get today, there is no virtue that will come to you. It is when you place value on it, when you link it up with your mind, when you synchronize, when you align with it spiritually, that's when some virtue will come upon you. If you joke with this ritual today, honestly, it is your business. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. It says that, I'm by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved. As you get this anointing today, nobody is permitted to mess around with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are anointing you to become priests and kings. Not even your brothers or your sisters. 
Do you know the brothers, the, the siblings of Moses? Aaron was the eldest. The one following was Miriam. Miriam was the one that was standing by the, by the, by the pool, by the water, to see if they would... If she, so she, she knew what came out, this boy came out. This boy would have, been died, would have died since. If not for the fact that we inside the house, we cooperated with our parents and we were just keeping him quiet. They would have killed him. The Egyptians would have killed him since. We just, were just cooperating. I was the one that was there that took care of me. The day they messed around with Moses. Ah. Even Moses himself was begging God. Say, please, God, uh, uh, just have mercy. Say, God said that I have heard you. I hear your plea of leniency. I have heard your allocutors. But nevertheless, let her at least spend seven days outside the camp in leprosy. So that she will know that next time you don't joke with somebody that I've anointed. Anybody that jokes with you after this anointing, they will have to spend seven days outside the camp in leprosy. You think that is too much? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Anybody that jokes with you after this anointing, the Lord God Almighty will show them pepe. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what will today's anointing do? I just want to enumerate a couple of things that today's anointing will do and then we'll go to the process of the anointing. Number one. The anointing will clean the slate for you. Amen. What do I mean? That it cleans the slate. It will cancel every causes. Everything that is operating against you in the negative. Everything that is operating with you in the negative. This anointing will cancel it and clean it. And I pray that let's not look at Numbers chapter 23. Let's look at Numbers chapter 23 verses 1 to 2. Numbers chapter 23 verses 1 to 2. It talks about the story. How many of us know the story of Balaam and Balak? How many of us are familiar with that story? Balaam and Balak. Balak was a king. And Balak knew that the, the people of Israel were coming his way. And he wanted to deal with them. Everybody knows that Israel is the child of God. So Balak now went to employ a soothsayer. I want to believe maybe during that time, that man, you know, how many of you, how many of you have watched Yoruba film before that they will carry on of cow and put something, put some red cloth on it and tie it, and then the man will come and raise one leg and then begin to say, This is what will happen. You believe that one. Most of most of us believe that one, but we don't believe the one that God is saying. Or if you see somebody now saying that, ah, this uh, you will run away. So they went to employ, so the Balak, King Balak went to employ Balaam to come and curse the people because this man, they know that he has an anointing for cursing. So they called him, so he said, oh, it's a simple thing. Go and bring, uh, let's put sacrifice somewhere, seven bulls, seven rams, seven altars. Once you just do it, I will come there, I will pronounce the curse. <laughs> Numbers, and Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. In verse 2, and Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Every altar in which they have offered something in order to deal with you. I pray that it will not work in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fire of God will consume it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said it's a simple thing. Do you know, it was because this, let me cut the story short. God said no, that you can, the Balak, the Balaam cannot curse these people. God refused it. Do you know that if curses is not anything, if curses does not mean anything, God would not have bothered himself to come to step into that case. But God stepped into that case, prevented the curse from happening. I pray for you. No curse will come upon you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Every curse that has been running in the family, either before now or whenever, 
I put a stop to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any curse coming from your father's house or your mother's house, by the oil of today, by the anointing of today, we cancel them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said you are exempted from every causes in your family in the name of Jesus. If there is also any causes that is running in your office, I command you today that it will not work concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. No curse will work on you in the name of Jesus Christ. No enchantment will work against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that is hovering around you in the negative, I cancel them today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the oil and the anointing of today, I remove them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, every planned curse, every way in which somebody is planning, so this is what, because people have now gone home now. Some people will go home and go and collect something. Some people will go home and go and do something. Some people will go home and go and see somebody. And they are reporting you. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That thing will backfire in the name of Jesus Christ. I heard the story of one man who they had gone to his, um, they had gone to mention his name with one, um, Babalao, or somebody. Voodoo priest, okay. <laughs> They are going to say, oh, this is what and what and what you will do. So they did it, just like Balak. They did it, they put everything together, they come. So the man said, what we'll do is, and the way they do it is that they will call the person's name three times. <laughs> Once they call the person's name three times, the person will just show up. So in this particular case, they call the name of the guy. But it so happened that that, that, that man is a child of God. That man started out in the year praising God. That man started out in the year getting anointing. That man started out in the year praying to God. So they called this name, Somtio. Then they said, Somtio is whatever that name is. Then the third one, they said, Somtio. So as the picture was coming out, the voodoo person, they had a knife in which he splashed it on the thing. But as he was doing that, it was his son's name that came out. And it was too late for him to withdraw his hand. He killed him. So in the same manner, anybody that goes to call your name somewhere, that thing will backfire against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Numbers 23, verse 23. And I'm saying this as a way of prayer. Numbers 23, verse 20. As we read this, I want you to just say amen. Say Numbers 23, verse 23. The Bible says that surely... There is no enchantment against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Neither is there any divination against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing negative will work against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are some curses also that are generational. I read of this story of um, a, a, an African village where the people were now, people were getting sick. Suddenly, people were getting sick and then they started dying. So they were wondering, what caused it? So some people came, they checked and checked, they realized that the thing was coming from the water that they were drinking. That it was that water, something came out of that, it was what was killing people. So people had to check. They went all the way. Then they realized at some point when they dived down the sea to the stream, to the source of the stream, they got there they found out that, that some pigs had been killed. They died. And that those pigs were now, now went down, down the river. And so they were the source of that stream. And so the odor, the negative whatever that was coming from the people was what was coming out was killing people. I'm just telling you just to typify, to illustrate the fact that the foundation matters. There are some things that are happening that, are, that actually came from the foundation that you don't know anything about. People just see water. It's clean water. They drink it, but then they disease, and then they die because of that, because they don't know. So it is something that has gone to the foundation. I pray for you today as you get this anointing. Be there anything in your foundation that you know or you don't know that is working against you in the negative? We are going to neutralize them by this anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. And Numbers 23 verse 20, Numbers 23 verse 20, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. 
you are receiving this commandment today. I'm blessing you. Nobody will be able to reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm blessing you and it cannot be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about foundation. Let me just quickly mention that thing. Pastor Shola mentioned something here when we had the vigil on Wednesday. And you see, this has nothing to do with him as an individual. He said that he entered a vehicle. His son, his father was a policeman, senior police officer. And he entered the vehicle they were traveling. Everywhere they went, once they get to the check checkpoint, and the police do whatever they do, even where they don't collect money from them, the people were saying that, you see, that they started cursing police. That police people, this is what will happen to them. This person did not know that he, it's not just one person, maybe about two or three of them, that they were cursing policemen. So, him as an individual, and they were, the curses they were giving, that their children will not succeed. So, he was there. It doesn't even matter if he was there. If he was not there, the, the curses would still have been going on. You know how many places in would they have released such type of curses? That made me thinking. My father is a judge. You know how many people that, in fact, one man asked him in my presence one day, he was his friend, the man said, that, ah, Honorable Justice, how, how do you feel when you sentence people to death? That you, have you not exercising the power of life and death over that human being? So you know how many people that would have gone to prison as a result of my father sentencing them? Do you think they will be praying for me? So when you look at such things, there are certain things that are foundational, that you don't have any power over. You need to engage extra power in order to be free from those causes. It's not like you people that are, you are children of doctor. People will be praying for you all the time. That, ah, it was that man that helped him, or it was that, so it can be both ways. I pray. No curse will work against you in the name of Jesus. There's this one that I also, I also need to mention. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. If you are not enjoying it, just tell me so that we can close and go to this anointing. No? <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. I just think that there are certain things that we need to put in your hand so that you know. And when you, are going, when you are going out in the course of the year, you know, you have that confidence. You walk in that confidence to say, yes, I've been anointed. By the grace, by the power of the anointing, there is no yoke that can, that can, that can withstand you. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. This is God speaking. So that means that there are curses. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That was what God said. The point that I want to bring out there is this. God was angry. This man had done something that made God angry. But when God started with him, God blessed him. That was where God started from. Now, God wanted to curse him, but God could not even curse him. What God caused was the ground. So, as you receive today's blessing, nobody will be able to curse you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even God with all his powers, because he had already blessed the man, he could no longer curse the man. But it was okay. How do I still shook him somewhere? That's why he now went to say that he should cause the ground for his sake. God could not cause him. In the same manner as you receive today's blessing, nobody will be able to curse you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will operate a curse-free life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What will today's anointing do? The first thing I said is that it will equalize. It will cancel every curse. It will also prevent any new causes from coming. And in case anybody tries, it will backfire against them. This anointing today will break every yoke and remove all burdens in the name of Jesus Christ. I say it will break every yoke in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you.
that why God created you, it will come to the surface in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you that you will make it in life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of what? Because of the anointing. Every yoke that you are suffering from, they shall be destroyed because of today's anointing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you and I want a louder believing amen. This anointing oil will destroy every yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything assigned to destroy you by this anointing will break them down in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is designed to slow you down by virtue of this, um, uh, this anointing will destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is designed to stagnate you by virtue of this anointing will break them down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By this anointing we kill all your killers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number two. Number three, the anointing will bring you the blessing. This anointing today will bring you what? The blessing. Now let me illustrate it as this, and we don't have too much time anymore. When Abraham was going to die, Abraham was already reaching properties in everything, everything, everything. The Bible recorded, please, when you get to go and read it, the Bible recorded that he distributed everything to the to the children of his concubines. All because after Father Abraham got um, Isaac, there were still also several other children that he got. All of them. He brought all of his properties together and distributed it to them. Then his own son, his real son, whom he took as his own son, Isaac, he brought him and placed hands on him and blessed him. And gave him the blessing. That is, he had given all of those things, all of those things that people seek for. He had given them out. But the real one, the original one is the blessing. He now gave him the blessing. And you know, in a short while, when Isaac started his life's journey, the Bible first described him that, oh, he became very rich. Then at some point he said, oh, he became exceedingly rich. Then at some point he said that he became uh, rich beyond all whatever. That is the blessing. All of the things that you are seeing today, they are small. But as this anointing come upon you today, you will receive the blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will receive the original in the name of Jesus Christ. It will work for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, this anointing will move you forward and give you favor. Amen. Can I say that every blessing comes to people from people? God blesses people through people. There is somebody there that will say, okay, I sign his papers. There is somebody there that will say, okay, come, I take you to somewhere. There is somebody there that will say, oh, who do we post to this people? Even if it doesn't matter, they know you or they don't know you. They will say, okay, this is the person we take to the south. This is the person we take to the north. This person we take to God bless. God blesses people through people. I pray for you. People will work for your favor in the name of Jesus. You will find out that people will work out things for your favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men will favor you in the name of Jesus to a loud amen, I pray that women will favor you in the name of Jesus. The old will favor you in the name of Jesus. The young will favor you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God will even give you favor in the sight of your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. As this oil lands on your head today, every form of stagnation is removed from you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will move forward to higher heights in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From one level of glory to higher levels of glory, you will move in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to move forward in the name of Jesus. I said, I command you to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to make it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to succeed in the name of Jesus. By virtue of today's anointing, I command you to excel in the name of Jesus Christ. 
the Lord shall increase you more and more and more and more in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us, for those people who have been experiencing near success syndrome, I pray for you, you will see it no more in the name of Jesus Christ. I said you will see it no more in the name of Jesus Christ. This anointing service will be for you for a deliverance service in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to make progress in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your result be obvious in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go on, people will see you and they know that something new has happened to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the fruit of your body is blessed in the name of Jesus. The fruit of your body is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Every part of your body is sanctified in the name of Jesus Christ. Your results shall be obvious to all in the name of Jesus Christ. People will see results coming out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will turn out good results in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to have more in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to do more in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to exceed expectations in the name of Jesus. I command you to exceed targets in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not wait for your children to come to bless you before you are blessed. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have just two more. What will this anointing do? This anointing will preserve you. With security, with safety, with defense. This anointing will preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 105 verses 13 to 15. Psalm 105 verses 13 to 15. Psalm 105 verses 13 to 15. The Bible says that when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yeah, he reproved kings for their sakes. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You are getting the anointing today. You are going to be described as the anointed. Therefore, nobody will be able to touch you in the negative. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody will be able to harm you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number six, this anointing will bring you healing. It will bring you healing. James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. Anointing breaks the yoke. It brings healing. James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. The Bible says, is there any sick, is any sick among you? Let him come for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That is what we are doing today. We are anointing you ahead against anything so that no sickness will be able to come near you. And the Bible says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. That is one other thing that the anointing does. The anointing heals you from the sickness and also if you have committed anything, any sins, they shall be forgiven you. You will receive forgiveness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to end with this one. Actually, I have a lot more, but then let me just end with this one. That's the example of Saul's anointing. 1 Samuel chapter 10. I'll read from verses 1 to 11. Just take a cue from it. 1 Samuel chapter 10. The Bible says that then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him. Just I won't kiss you today. I'm going to take a vial of oil and pour it upon your head and said, is it not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Now listen very carefully. This is very important as you go on in your, in your journey. Because you are going to get anointing today. But what are you going to see? What are you going to do? What are you expected to do thereafter? Bible says here that when thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelza. That's wherever you go to. And they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And Lord, the Father had left the care of the asses and sorrow for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? So whatever it is that you actually came here seeking, whatever it is that you have been seeking for year 2022, by virtue of this anointing today, as you leave this place, whatever has been lost in your family, it will be found in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever, whatever has been a minus, whatever has been a subtraction, whatever has been a gap in your income, 
or in your emotions or in your entitlements or even in your head in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be found in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, Then shall thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men, going up to God to Bethel. Listen carefully. You meet with three men, going up to God to Bethel. These are people, these are priests going to seek God, going to serve God. He said, one will be carrying three keys, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. And they will salute you and give you two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive of their hands. There are three men, they are carrying three loaves of bread. One for each of them. Three of them, they are carrying three loaves of bread. But from their own three, out of the three of them, they give you alone two. It's only one that is remaining with them. I pray for you you will get more than your own fair share in the name of Jesus Christ. Even when it is not enough for them, they will give you more than you deserve in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass when thou come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Verse 6, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Now let me tell you, this man received anointing. And he said, as you are living here, after this anointing, these are the things that you will see. When you go on, you will mix with some people. They have things that they are sharing. They will give you more than your own fair share as you are going on. And then apart from that, you will also go. You will meet some pastors. You will meet all of them. They will be prophesying. The Bible says that, you say, as you do that, that the Spirit of God will come upon you. As you receive today's anointing, I pray that the Spirit of God will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have not been prophesying before you begin to prophesy in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said there that and you shall become another man. That another man is in the positive sense. You will become another man, you become another woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, and let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. I pray that God will be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to be captain over God's inheritance in the name of Jesus. If you, begin, if you read it all the way down, it so happened that as the man of God said it, and the guy left, when he left, he started seeing these things happen. So as I'm praying for you, as I'm prophesying concerning you today, you begin to see it happen in the name of Jesus Christ. It so happened that when he, when he met with the prophets and he started prophesying, people that were around, he said, ah, is he also... Is so also among the prophets? Let me give you what that means. It means that as you are going, the prophecy, the prophesy that I'm giving you today is such that if you are interested in money, for example, when you go, you will see people that are billionaires, you will join them. As they are spending billions, you are also spending billions. And then from people will come and say, Ah, is so is you are you also among the billionaires? That will be your portion in this new year in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be turned into another man. I said, you shall be turned into another man. Those who knew you before, they will begin to marvel in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Time will fail me to talk about David's anointing. But one major thing about David's anointing, let me just quickly mention that as, after David was anointed, he went to his um, this thing. That's how you are going today. It will look ordinary. But then after that, he killed a lion. He killed a bear. Then he also came to kill Goliath. Then after that, he came to the king's house. The king favored him. He played music. King that was getting mad began to, give the big, began to get well every time. And so the king loved him. So favor, victory over enemies and all of that. Those are the things that accompany anointing. As you get anointed, as you get anointed today, you get all of that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us rise up to our feet. And first things first, I want you to thank God for 
What do you thank God for today's anointing that you are going to be receiving? It is not, it is like no other one. It is the first day of the year. Isn't it wonderful that in the first day of the year, you are in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. You are worshipping and praising God. Then apart from that, you have gotten to the point whereby you are being, you are being impacted for something new, for something wonderful. The Lord God Almighty will, say, will, will, will do something new in your life. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to thank God for this opportunity. Begin, we, we begin to thank God for this opportunity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just bring one. Give thanks to the Almighty God for this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to begin to pray that this anointing will work for you. Now you need to make it louder so that God will hear. Begin to declare that this anointing will work for you. It is anointing for year 2023. This anointing, you know, it will work for me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will work for me in the name of Jesus Christ. It will change my life for the better in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to declare everything that anointing does, it will do it for me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This anointing, everything it does, it will do it for me. It will do it for my family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This anointing will not go weak in the name of Jesus Christ. This anointing will be indeed powerful in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This anointing will be powerful in the name of the Lord Jesus Let every minister please come this way. Let us pray. Let us begin to pray. Ministers, please come this way. Please pray on the anointing oil. This anointing will be powerful. Let us begin to pray. Please pray. Pray in the spirit over this, over this anointing oil. Brethren, I want you to begin to ask that this anointing will do you good in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I begin, to, begin to ask the Lord God Almighty that this anointing should do you good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, begin to declare, as I tell this anointing, year 2023, I'm going to be a victor. Nothing will withstand me in this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to pray that as this anointing will contain the power that will transform my life. Begin to declare, this anointing will, will, will release power that will transform my life for the better. Open your mouth and declare it. The Bible says, declare that thou mayest be justified. Declare that thou mayest be justified. You have the opportunity to do it now. You have the opportunity to do it now. I want you to pray as you receive this anointing. Every sickness in your body will be gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to pray that as you receive this anointing, you will get favored. As you receive this anointing, you will get favored. You will get blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to pray that as you receive this anointing, things will change for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, begin to, be, 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 begin to pray that as you receive this anointing, things will work out for the better for you in all that you do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this anointing will procure protection for you. Brethren, please pray. I beg of you, please pray. Double click on this prayer point. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is there anything that you need in the course of this year? Is there anything that you are looking up to God for? In the course of this year, begin to pray that this anointing will procure it for you. That this anointing will procure it for you. That this anointing will procure it for you. This anointing will procure provision. This anointing will procure protection. This anointing will procure security. This anointing will procure safety. Begin to ask as you get anointed today that your steps will be ordered by the Almighty God. That your steps will be ordered by the Almighty God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask that this anointing will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up this oil before you. By itself, this is just oil. But Father, we ask that you will anoint this oil in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, I wish that amen will be far reaching. Father, we pray that you will anoint this oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will make this oil holy and consecrated in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that this oil, this anointing oil, will bring glory to your name in the name of Jesus Christ. 
everything that we have discussed, everything that we have identified that the anointing will do, everything that we did not even say, but which the anointing does, every power that we ascribe to the anointing, we infuse them into this anointing all in the name of the Lord Jesus. As the anointing lands on the people's head, Father, we pray, let miracles begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Let there be transformation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though you might not see anything, this anointing will work for you. Jesus was passing by, he saw that tree. He wanted to eat on the tree and it, 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 it didn't work out. And Jesus said to that tree, that Jesus caused that tree. Nothing happened immediately. Nobody saw anything. But they went and the next day when they were coming back, they saw the effect of it. Even though we might not see the effect today, by the time you come back here, we will see the effect of this anointing in the name of Jesus. This anointing will achieve its purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who have cause to glorify the name of the Lord. This year, 2023, you will be able to testify to say, I started the year being anointed. Amen. That is why I'm displaced. That is why I'm victorious. That is why I'm a winner. That is why I am well. That is why I'm, a, I'm able to defeat the sickness. That is why I'm an overcomer. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, ministers, please help us distribute one per family. One per family. Well, after we have distributed, then we will now anoint ourselves. Just distribute it one per family.
understand that um, if we did not receive express commandment to do it, we will not do this. You, I'm not uh, the kind of person that does uh, uh, this um, just doing things just for show. This has been expressly commanded. And let me share a testimony with you. In the place of prayer, in the course of this year, about two or three months ago, I'm telling you this, if it is not ascribable to God, if it could have been human being, I wouldn't ascribe it. My executive director was coming to visit where I was. The issues that they were coming to deal with were issues that could actually have moved me out of the place. I'm telling you. So I was actually in a very precarious situation. And I just, just simple prayer. I won't say, ah, I fasted, I pray. I just, God, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. It was around that time also, I don't know if I was listening to a message or God just showed me something in the course of studying the word. And we were looking at that place where David, David, when, this, when, when the Bible said that, so there was an evil spirit from the Lord. Evil spirit from the Lord was coming to trouble David, uh, coming to trouble Saul. And they went to bring David. And all he did was play music. And that evil spirit goes. So, I got from that point to say, wow. Even if it is from God, when music comes in, you can expel that evil spirit. So, the night before, when I was going to sleep, I just, I just played worship music. I put it low. So that if there's any evil spirit around there, I'm expelling it. That was what was in my mind. This was me. I have not told, told anybody. The next morning, just in the course, and normally in the, my first hour, first 90 minutes, in the, if you call me or anything, you won't get it. That will, that will not happen. So it was my period of coming. An idea came into my mind. It could only have been God. By the time that idea came, I recognized that it could only be God that brought this. And by the time I applied it, when the ED came, the ED came along with two directors, chief of staff, and all of them. They did all, they checked everything they wanted to check, but when I introduced this joker, ha, Lawakba. Hey. I'm telling you, by the time I introduced this joker, God, I'm telling you, the ED said that, ah, ah, I've not seen anything like this before. The chief of staff said, ah, ah, this is new. What I'm saying is that it is by inspiration from the almighty God. That just joker that God showed me, that God gave to me, it obliterated everything negative around there. It was the game changer. So if God is operating with you, and I pray that this anointing will make God to operate with you in such a way that you have game changers in hand in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm saying that if God had not asked us to do this, I wouldn't do it. It's just, God said we should do it. Please take it seriously. Now, do we have everybody with their families? You take this anointing oil, I'm going to pray on it once more. And the first thing you're going to do is that you're going to anoint your mouth or your tongue. Just put a little bit of it on your tongue or something. And you will pray a set of prayers, just a few prayers. And then thereafter, you will also anoint your leg. Then we will anoint your head. And the Lord God Almighty will do the remaining. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up this oil to you. Even as we have prayed, Father, we pray, let you perform miracles in the name of Jesus. Let your power go into it and do the impossible in the name of Jesus Christ. What previously people have thought was impossible, as they begin to, as they begin to use this oil, as they begin to apply this oil, every impossibilities will give way to possibilities in the name of Jesus. 
Every inadequacy will give way to adequacy in the name of Jesus. Every lack will bring about abundance in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are weak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray as you apply this all, you will get strength in the name of Jesus. Wherever you have, wherever you don't have enough, either intellectually or financially or materially, by the advent of this oil, you have more than enough in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that the power of God will go into this oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the name of the Lord will be glorified at the end of the day. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now I want you please quickly anoint your tongue or your mouth and I want you to begin to say, to begin to declare that I'm a brand new man. That I'm a brand new man. That I'm standing out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a brand new man. I'm standing out in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever I say is law in the name of Jesus Christ. But anoint yourself, anoint your mouth and say whatever I declare, the power of God will come upon it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that his priests and his kings, that they should command him concerning the works of his hands. I want you to pray that this anointing, by virtue of this anointing, anything I declare, so shall it be. Whatever I declare, it shall be so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we are praying. Now, what just one more? You anoint your legs. I want you to anoint your legs, and you are going to be declaring. That wherever my steps, wherever my feet steps on, anything, don't worry, you don't need to remove your shoes actually. Just anoint any part of your leg, you'll be fine. Uh, well, say so you don't really need to. I don't want to inconvenience you. Please. Brethren, please begin to declare that my steps are ordered by the Almighty God. Begin to declare that my steps are ordered by the Almighty God. I will be at the right place at the right time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am led by the Almighty God. Every day of my life, every day of my life in this year, 2023, I am led by the Almighty God. I will not stray away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am led by the pillar of cloud during the day and the pillar of fire in the night. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not miss road. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will not miss road in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever there is trouble or disaster waiting, I will not get there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever there is trouble, wherever there is problem, I will not go there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My steps are ordered aright. My feet is guided in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also by virtue of this leg, I get dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. I dominate wherever the steps or wherever my feet shall step on. I conquer it. I take it over. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever my, step, my, my feet steps to, I cover it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. There was a time in Abuja. I don't know, more than 12 years ago. There was... Um, just to tell you about the power of the anointing. And when you look at the power of the anointing vis-a-vis -vis -vis direct commandment. Myself and my brother, we didn't have a place to stay. They kicked us out. So we were living with somebody, the person gave us one month. The person has a three-bedroom apartment. He was staying in one room. Two of us were staying in one other room. He was keeping every other thing in, the, in another room. After one month, it was getting to the second month, and it was like, ah, if I don't change this away, they will tabernacle with me here. So the man said, you have to go. He gave us a day, so he said, we should go. I didn't have any other choice. So my brother, we found a place for him. For my own, there was my, my organization at that time, NACA. We had a four, 
three bedroom apartments, uh, four number three bedroom apartment in a particular place. It's for the directors. The three, there are three that were already occupied. There's a particular one, the man that was supposed to occupy, he travels back and forth from Kaduna, he doesn't stay. So, so I went to beg him, in trepidation, please. Just give me just one room inside. There is one room that is like um, by the side there, before you get into the house fully. Just say, hey, I don't know. I say, okay, okay, go and stay there for the time. But my wife will soon be coming when she comes. We will, we will have to. So you have to find a place. Where I say, just let me get to. Around that time, that was when they were telling us in church about the power of the anointing. That when you get into a particular house, anoint the house. You are entering a room, anoint the room. You just bought a car, anoint the car. Anoint your leg. Anoint your shoe. Anoint this and this and that. They told us in church. You have just no matter. So as I got it, that thing that they said about anointing, they have come home. So I carried my anointing oil. I anointed the entire house. I anointed the, the room they gave me. The one they didn't give me, I anointed. The city room, I anointed. The kitchen, I anointed. I anointed everywhere. It was a three-bedroom apartment. Sometimes, so the man that owned the house, and you see, when you are anointing, what we're saying is, I take over this house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was just taking over the spiritually, because they say any area in which you are anointing. So I was anointing every day, I was taking over this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Only the Spirit of God will work in this house. Any spirit that is contrary to the Spirit of God will not be able to function. A short way, doctor attacked him. He said, I don't like the house again. I'm going. He's, he now went to look for another house, which was just two doors away. When I say, you know the place, two doors away. Just two doors away from where we are. That was a three-bedroom apartment. He went to hire a two-bedroom apartment to pay with his own money. This other one, it was government money that was being used to pay for it. He went to hire. He left the place for me. I lived in that house for about six years free. Thereafter, without being the right, the power of the anointing. I took over that house by the power. In fact, when I left that, when we left that house, we went to our own house. So I never had cause to pay rent. That is the power of the anointing. Somebody came at some point, the enemies will still come. The enemies can come. So another, some other people in the office, they gang together. They said, hey, you can't. He's, he's not a director. He's not the one that should be. So they told one director that. There's an extra place in that place. It's not need that gets it, that owns the place. So the man, the man that they told, it's okay, let him go and look at the place whether he likes it. The tiles that were in that house that time, you know rubber tiles? It so happened that the day the man came to come to, to inspect the house, one of my brothers, by that time we had grown stature. My brother, I have brothers that were staying with me, so... So this room that is just in the middle that we are not using, let us use it now. I said, it's only one room they gave me. He said, yeah, let us, okay, let us clean it. So he washed it, cleaned it. So you know when you, so those of us that know rubber tires, you know when you wash it, the thing comes out. So the man came, saw the, he said, I don't want. He left the place for me. By the power of the anointing, I own that place. I, when I began to think what it would have cost me, to begin to pay rent in that place for about six or seven years, you know that it is just to trust whatever they tell you and obey. It will help you. I pray that the grace for obedience will fall upon you today. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we don't need to anoint you on your head. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty will answer us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But before then, please, I want you to rise up. And let us also pray that this oil as it falls onto my head. Just say whatever you want. Declare whatever prayer you want in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm very, very clear that whatever God planned to do, when he asked us to do this, it will happen to you. Whatever God planned to achieve by asking us to do this, you will get it. Whatever benefits God plans to release by virtue of this, you will enjoy that benefit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Bobby, please come. Let's do it together. Mm. 
Okay. So all chance you can now just help us for those who want to come. We'll just please let's have the song. Let's have the worship song. Oh, I will do this quickly. Sorry, I've taken your time, but it's not every Sunday that we have. You hated me. It is well with you in Jesus' name.
Lord. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. Thank you for that which you have done. Even for the things that are unseen that we have done, we know that in the spiritual realm there is a lot going on. Father, it will favor us in the name of Jesus Christ. That which you plan to do, Father, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that be a manifestation of your plan in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, can we stretch our hands towards back and let's commit him into God's hands? Let's pray. The Lord will be with you.